Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at some applications of the derivative, basically what derivatives mean. And we're going to take a look at coming up with the graph of a function such that f prime of x is less than 0. And what would that mean to us if the derivative is always less than 0? This should tell you that your graph must be decreasing. So it's decreasing. But then it says that the rate of change of the function which means also means derivative, is increasing. So the graph is decreasing, but the derivative has to be increasing or getting larger. That is going to, we're going to give that a name in a, probably a couple of weeks. We're going to call that concave up. If the derivative is increasing, it's going to be concave up. So that's sort of weird. How can a function be, be falling, but the derivative getting larger? And so I'm going to show you what that graph would look like. An example would probably be, a best example I can think of would probably be a negative exponential. Let's take a look at this negative exponential. I've got a graph here that is always decreasing, but what's happening to the slopes? Well, the rate of change of the function out, well, out here to the left, that is a very steep negative. So this is a big negative slope. Down here, when it intercepts the y-axis, that is also a negative slope, but that is a smaller negative slope. So the negatives are approaching zero, and so these slopes are actually getting bigger. They're getting bigger and heading towards zero. So that would be an example of a graph that's decreasing, but the derivatives or the, the tangent lines are actually getting larger. At least their slopes are getting larger. So it could be like negative 5, negative 1, negative 1 half, almost zero. Those are, get, those are increasing. All right, let's do another one. Uh, find A and B so that F is differentiable everywhere. This means two things. First of all, it must be continuous. And on top of that, the slopes have to match. The derivative from the left, from the left, has to equal the derivative from the right. So let's write down a couple of equations. First of all, for continuity, we need AX squared plus 1 to equal bx minus 3 when x is 2. So that's going to lead me to the equation 4a plus 1. Of course, if we took, put the 2 in for x, we'll get 4a plus 1 equals 2b minus 3. And since that's one equation in two variables, that's not enough to solve, but I need another statement. I need the derivatives to match. So we, the, from the left, the derivative of ax squared plus 1 is 2ax. Bring the 2 down and subtract 1 off the exponent. And of course, we learned that the derivative of any constant is 0. So 2ax must equal the derivative of bx minus 3 is just b. So I have another equation. I actually have it solved for b equals. And this must be true when x is 2. So my equation for the matching the derivatives would be 4a equals b. Now I have enough information that I can find a and b. So I'm going to substitute. This is already solved for b equals 4a. So I'm going to take this 4a and I'm going to substitute it right there for b. So my equation will be 4a plus 1 equals 2 times 4a minus 3. So 4a plus 1 equals 8a minus 3. So, add the 3 to both sides, subtract the 4a from both sides, so 4 equals 4a, therefore a equals 1. And if a equals 1, b has to be 4. a equals 1, and b equals 4. Okay, you're going to do some problems tomorrow that have to do with projectile motion or motion along a parabola. And you need to get used to this position function equation. This is in feet per second, negative 16t squared plus v naught t plus s naught. Um, we're, we're supposed to use that and answer this question, when does the diver hit the water? So let's write our equation out. S of t is negative 16t squared. The reason that's negative 16 is because the acceleration due to gravity in feet per second is negative 32 feet per second per second. And your general formula is 1 half a t squared. We're going to develop that in calculus later on. But for now, just know this formula. Now, v naught is the initial velocity, and that was given to us as 16 feet per second. So I'm going to put a 16 where that v naught was, and then s naught is the initial position. That's this 32. 
So that is the position of the diver. And I want to know when it hits the water. Well, hitting the water is going to be when the position is zero. We have no height whenever, uh, I'm going to say h equals zero or s of t equals zero. We have no height when we hit the water. So I'm going to set that entire equation equal to zero, and I'll factor out a negative 16. And then I'm going to go a little further with algebra. We know how to factor a trinomial. This is going to mean that negative 16 times two factors, this should be t minus 2 and t plus 1, which would lead me to the fact that t equals 2 and t equals negative 1. Now, we started at 0, so we're going to ignore the negative time, and we're going to find out that t equals 2 is when we have hit the water. Part B says find the instantaneous velocity. This means s prime at 1. Find the derivative and plug in 1. So s of, we have an equation for s of t, so let's find s prime of t. s prime of t would be negative 32t, I'm using this equation right here with our differentiation rules, plus 16. And of course the derivative of 32 is 0. So now I'm going to plug in 1 for t, and I get negative 32 plus 16, which is negative 16 feet per second. <coughs> Excuse me. So what does that mean that if our, if our derivative is negative at 1? That means we are actually falling. We're losing, um, we're losing feet, I guess. We're losing our altitude. It doesn't ask, ask me to explain that, but of course we know that that's going to happen. We're going to practice the average velocity formula. So this is going to be s of 2 minus s of 1 all over 2 minus 1. Some of you flip this on your test. It's the y values on top and the x values on the bottom. Got to take a sip of water, sorry. I already calculated. I know what s of 2 is. s of 2 is 0. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm very sorry about that. And s of 1 is 32. I got that from my calculator, but you could plug in 1 up here and you would get that it was I'll actually plug it in up here and you get that that's 32. All over 2 minus 1, which, give, which would give me negative 32 feet per second. On average, we're falling negative 32 feet per second. Okay, so let's go take a look at one last example. You're going to have to draw some velocity functions from a position function. You need to know that velocity is the first derivative of position. So it describes the slope to position. So here's your position function. Let's take a look at these slopes. This, ha this has three unique slopes. Let's take a look at the slope from 0 out to 4. From 0 out to 4. This is a constant slope. It looks it's going up 3 over 2. Up 3 over 2. It's a constant 3 halves. That means that my velocity graph will have a horizontal or a constant value of 3 halves. 1 and a half right there. And I'm going to draw that until I get to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I am going to draw a straight line to that point. I'm going to try and do it with this. And I'm going to put an open circle right there. I didn't do a very good job with that line, showing you the half. But that is 3 halves. Why is there an open circle there? Why don't I have a derivative at the point 4? Why is, I'm telling you right now the derivative is undefined at 4. Why is that? Can you tell? Look you there. That sharp turn. All of a sudden, our position is constant, which means our velocity was zero. We weren't moving. Position is constant. Our velocity is zero. What's the slope of a horizontal line? The slope of a horizontal line is zero. So velocity is the slope to position. So the slope of this line is zero. So I'm going to from 4 out to 5, 6, 7, I'm going to have a slope of 0. And I'm going to have another open circle here. And an open circle here too. So here's a, this is really a piecewise graph for my velocity. Then we go to a slope of up 1 over 2, which is a slope of half for the next two units. Does it look like I've lost a line here on my, on my notes? Well, I'm going to put this line back in my notes here. I don't know how that happened. We're going to add this line here. So we're going to go to a slope of one half for the next two units.
units, and that would be the graph of your velocity function. So you're going to practice things just like this tomorrow in class, and I will see you guys then.